In this lecture, we talk about innovation and entrepreneurship, how entrepreneurship and innovation that is particularly radical innovation of whole new ways of doing things often go hand in hand. The innovation of successful firm, firms can take many different forms. For instance, small firms make up 52% of home-based businesses and 2% of franchises. Many of today's largest businesses started off as small firms that used innovation to achieve success. Entrepreneurs provide fresh ideas and usually have greater flexibility to change internally to adapt to the changing work environment, business environment, and markets than do larger companies. Jeff Lubell founded a premier, the premier apparel company, True Religion, in 2002. It has gone on to be listed in among the Forbes best publicly traded small companies in America. Perhaps one of the most significant strengths of small business is their ability to innovate and to bring significant benefits to customers. Small firms produce more than half of all innovations within the economy. For instance, the founder and CEO of the small firm Unikey, Phil Dumas, invented a new way for consumers to keep their doors locked. Dumas invented Kivo, a motorized deadbolt lock that links to users' iPhones. With just a touch of a finger, consumers can lock and unlock their doors from remote locations. Unikey distributes products in major retailers such as Lowe's and Home Depot. This is just one example of a small company with the ability to innovate, to create an entire new way of doing things, and to contribute to the benefit of cons consumers, customers, and the economy overall. Small businesses are found in nearly every industry, but retailing and wholesaling, services manufacturing, and high technology are especially attractive to entrepreneurs. These fields are relatively easy to enter, and they require a low level of an initial financing. Small business owners in these industries also find it easier to focus on a specific group of consumers, and this is key, Finding a specific niche that you can serve with a new product or service, that's how innovations happen. Then they can spread to a broader market once some of the early kinks are worked out. New firms in these industries initially suffer less from heavy competition than other established firms, primarily or at least partly because they're addressing the, niche, the, the market needs of a relatively small niche, which is not one that's being focused upon by the larger companies. Retailers acquire goods from producers and wholesalers and they sell them to consumers. Main, street, main streets and shopping centers and malls are generally lined with independent music stores, sporting goods stores, dry cleaners, boutiques, drug stores, restaurants, caterers, service stations, and very in hardware stores, all of these that sell directly to consumers. The service sector includes businesses that do not actually produce a particular good. Service sector accounts for 80% of US jobs, including farm workers, real estate insurance, oh, real estate insurance, and personal personnel agencies. It's also things like barber shops, banks, Television and computer repair shops, copy centers, dry cleaners, and accounting firms are all service businesses. Many of these identify a niche, but I would add if they don't innovate, they often don't grow beyond their initial niche. So it's important to keep in mind you find a niche, but if you want to become a, a large household, word, household name, if you will, it's important to come up with a strategy where one also grows. Manufacturing goods can also provide unique alternatives for small businesses. Small businesses sometimes have an advantage over large firms because they customize their products, again, to meet specific customer, customer needs. The idea is you customize initially to meet specific, specific needs, but it's actually a broader need in the marketplace. People just don't know necessarily that they want it or need it until the product is up and running. Such products might include custom artwork, jewelry, clothing, 
furniture, for example. High technology is a broad term used to describe businesses that depend heavily on advanced scientific and engineering knowledge. People who are able to innovate or identify new markets in the fields of computers, biotechnology, genetic engineering, robotics, and other markets have become the day, today's tech giants. You think of some examples of companies that are of, of opportunities that new technologies are creating. Just reflect and think about that a little bit. Give you some examples. Think of some of your own. You know that retailing, what a retailing firm does, it acquires goods and producers from wholesalers and sells them to consumers. Many small business re retailers can be found in most places and around communities in the United States. Small business retailers include independent music stores, shopping goods stores, drug stores, cleaners, dry goods stores, restaurants, just to name a few. Entering a retail segment is considerably less expensive than setting up a manufacturing enterprise. This is one major reason why so many entrepreneurs are attracted to the retail to, to retailing enterprises. It's also a difficult market to maintain and to grow because there's so much competition in retailing. It's a good place to start. There's also some risks associated with it. Service sector businesses include real estate, insurance, and personnel agencies, barbershops, banks, televisions, computer repair shops. We've talked about uh, several of these before. Also services like beauticians, morticians, jewelers, doctors, veterinarians. All of these are small businesses and the skills are usually not required by large firms. Notice that dry cleaners is both an example of retailing and wholesaling stores as well as service sector businesses the the um, you know what a retailing firm does it acquires goods from producers or wholesalers and sells them to consumers many small business retailers can be found in in most places in and around communities in the united states small business retailers like music stores sporting goods stores like we talked about before are just a few Entering this segment is considerably less expensive than setting up a manufacturing enterprise. You're essentially buying from others who are manufacturing. You also have a broader range of goods, so there's more, it's easier to attract consumers into your store. This is one major reason why so many, so many entrepreneurs initially are attracted to retailing enterprises. As I said, because you're in the middle between a manufacturer and a consumer, sometimes there's also risk if you can't maintain the, the uh, appropriate level of profit margin. Service sector businesses is another example. These include real estate, insurance, personal agencies, and those sorts of things. Beauticians, morticians, um, oftentimes these are the kinds of individuals who are don't necessarily uh, ha they have skills that aren't necessarily required by large firms. It's an opportunity to essentially make a start a business and have a job uh, as well as, um, as, as have the opportunity to be one's own boss. Notice that dry cleaning is both an example of retailing and wholesaling stores as well as service sector businesses. Sometimes dry cleaners can be doing work for other smaller shops and that sort of thing. So they can be doing certain kinds of wholesaling. The difference in industries are not necessarily exclusive. Some of these terms, you can have multiple lines of business where you operate in a, in a wholesale business, but also a retail business. Things to keep example, uh, keep I an idea of is that you can be in multiple industries um, and even having a small business. Um, in the next section, we've talked about where businesses come from, large uh, entrepreneurial businesses that turn into large businesses through innovation, small businesses, uh, different opportunities for starting small businesses. Um, the next lecture we'll talk about the personal choice of whether or not to consider becoming an entrepreneur and what to take into account when you do that. And we'll do that in the lecture five.